Our mission is not to avenge centuries of persecution. That's not what attacking Marijuana was all about. Do you understand? We will fight and rob those who attack us, but we must never cross that final line. We will never kill. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be examining the tragic captain of the Sun Pirates, Fisher Tiger. Fisher Tiger is an absolutely stacked sea bream fishman with a salmon complexion hailing from Fishman Island. Tiger is a strong, driven, and compassionate fishman who is revered as a hero and legendary figure amongst the fishman race, as well as in certain circles of humans. Although Tiger's story began in the impoverished fishman district, where he grew up and subsequently took on the role of a patriarchic figure, becoming the protector of the district and its citizens. As a result, Tiger became quite a respected figure, even in the more well off parts of Fishman Island, to the point where even royal knew his name. In terms of ideology, Fisher Tiger acted as a direct counter to Queen Otohime, who during the time period was actively pushing for an integrated relationship between fishmen and humans. Tiger was in the opposite camp, believing that fishmen and humans should remain completely separated. And it's contextually important to add that humans and fishmen had been suffering racial tension for as long as anybody could remember, with fishmen being particularly prone to being victimized by humans. Even with that in mind, one day Fisher Tiger decided to embark on a journey to the surface world. The exact length of this journey is unknown, but it did amount to several years before he would return to Fishman Island. The length of this journey was more than likely unfortunately due to the fact that during his voyage, Tiger was captured by the world nobles and forced to become one of their slaves at the holy land of Marijoie. And after years of suffering all kinds of torture and abuse, Tiger eventually escaped and finally returned to his homeland. However, Tiger could not bear the thought of leaving the other slaves behind, and so he set back out to the surface world and free climbed the entirety of the Red Line with his bare hands to a arrived back at Marijoie and attacked the city all on his own, managing to cause enough chaos to free an untold amount of slaves from captivity. During this time, Tiger did not discriminate, and he helped slaves of all races, including humans, and actually happened to free a very important human by the name of Boa Hancock, who would grow up to become the Empress of Amazon Lily and one of the seven warlords of the sea. He also freed a young girl named Koala, who we'll get to in a second. But Tiger then personally brought all of the freed Fishman slaves back to Fishman Island and offered them all a place among his newly formed pirates crew, the Sun Pirates. Tiger also recruited prominent figures who had not been slaves, such as Jinbei and Arlong. Each crew member was branded with the Sun Pirate symbol, which was an alteration of the mark given to the slaves on Marijoie. This way, it would be impossible to tell who on the crew was a former slave and who wasn't. The Sun Pirates would then begin to operate with the mission to free the oppressed and disrupt the world government in general. In this effort, Fisher Tiger's incredible strength was recognized by the world government, who eventually issued a bounty of 230 million berries on his head. Now, obviously, many, if not all of the Sun Pirates harbored a strong hatred towards humans. However, Tiger prohibited the killing of any humans in their path. This is because he did not wish for he or his crew to stoop to his perceived level of humanity and become cold-blooded murderers. Although one day Fisher Tiger and the Sun Pirates would have to confront their complex feelings towards humanity directly when they encountered Koala, a young slave that Tiger had freed during his assault on Marijoie. Tiger, greatly empathizing with the plight of slaves, agreed to ferry Koala back to her home at Full Shout Island, much to the surprise of the rest of the Sun Pirates. Tiger would also end up branding Koala with the symbol of the Sun Pirates in order to remove her mark of slavery, thus freeing her and allowing her to be a proper human being for the first time. With the exception of Arlong, the entirety of the Sun Pirates grew to love Koala and were all even very tearful when the time came for her departure. Fisher Tiger would personally deliver Koala to her village, however the citizens of the village recognized Tiger and reported his presence to the Marines. Tiger was soon intercepted by a force led by then Rear Admiral Strawberry, and although the Sun Pirates managed to commandeer a Marine battleship and escape, Tiger was mortally wounded in the process. Due to Tiger possessing a rare blood type, the only way to save him would have been to transfuse a source of blood that was stored on the Marine battleship, which the Doctor of the Sun Pirates, Aladdin, was fully prepared to do. However, there was one issue with this scenario, which was that that blood came from a human. During his final moments, Tiger revealed to his crew that he had in fact been a slave of the world nobles, and as a result, no matter how much he attempted to do so, he could never rid himself of his deep-seated hate towards humanity. It was this hatred that led him to the decision that he would rather die than accept human blood. However, despite his personal feelings, Fisher Tiger used his last words to request that the Sun Pirates never reveal that he was a slave, nor that they had been betrayed and ambushed in an effort to halt the cycle of vicious hatred between fishmen and humans. Tiger then passed away, leaving an extraordinary legacy upon the world. Some more fun facts about Fisher Tiger. 
Fisher Tiger's name is actually somewhat of a pun in Japanese, as the Thai portion of it is actually the Japanese word for sea bream, the real world fish that makes up most of Tiger's DNA. Furthermore, in regards to why his name ended up being Fisher Tiger rather than just Fisher Tai, an explanation may be found in Chinese mythology. In China, tigers have always been the traditional rival and antithesis of the dragon, which in this case would make perfect sense as Fisher Tiger is the natural enemy of the world nobles, who are also known as the Celestial Dragons. In addition to his talents in combat and leadership, Fisher Tiger was also an exceptionally skilled carpenter and even built his own pirate ship. And finally, a truly useless fact, Fisher Tiger once wore a shirt with a hippopotamus on it. There is no deeper meaning to this, I guess he just likes hippos. And that pretty much does it for Fisher Tiger. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. Finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.